following show, we'll be looking at the internal brain features through a series of horizontal and coronal brain sections. All the buttons in this show have been disabled for the purpose of this video. When observing horizontal and coronal sections, it can be noted that there are basically three layers of nerve tissue that can be observed. An outer layer of gray matter, the cerebral cortex, a middle layer of white matter, and a deep layer of nuclear components of the telencephalon and diencephalon. Starting our study of this region, we'll be observing two horizontal sections. This, is beneficial, this will be beneficial in helping one to develop a three-dimensional image of the structures that are seen in the following coronal sections. Structures that we can see here right off the bat, there's things we've seen previously, the, the corpus callosum, the major commissural band connecting the two hemispheres. This por portion of it, this part of it is known as the genio. Then we see the, uh, the C-shaped structure, the lateral ventricle being cut in two spots. And then in the midline, we can see a little bit of the third ventricle. Now, some white matter and gray matter features I want to point out on this. First, this V-shaped band of white matter, the internal capsule. This is an, ex is an extremely important bundle of fibers because it basically uh, transmits almost all of the ascending and descending information going to or from the cerebral cortex. It is composed of three parts. One is the anterior dim. Two is known as the genu. It's the bend in the internal capsule. And three is the posterior dim. Medial to the uh, uh, anterior dim, we can see the, a caudate nucleus. And lateral to it, there's a structure known as the lenticular nucleus. These are two new gray matter masses that are part of the telencephalon. Medial to the posterior dim is the thalamus, it is a component of the diencephalon. Uh, lateral to the posterior dim, of course, is the lenticular nucleus. Continuing with a, uh, another horizontal section, which is slightly inferior or ventral to the previous section. We see that the corpus callosum, the genio region, is still in view here, as well as the lateral ventricle cut in two locations. The more anterior one, which is the larger space, is going into the anterior horn, while the posterior location is that portion going into the inferior horn. In the midline, now the third ventricle is in clear view, and we can see that the third ventricle is communicating with the lateral ventricle through its inferior interventricular foramen. At the posterior border of the third ventricle, we see a small band of white matter. This is a commissural band connecting the two sides of the hemisphere, and that is the posterior commissure. Now, let's look at the other features we saw in the previous slide. Here is our internal capsule again. Anterior limb, posterior limb, and genu. And you can see that that anterior limb is bordered medially by the caudate nucleus and laterally by the lenticular nucleus. And now the lenticular nucleus is that we can see is divided into its two subparts, the butamen and globus pallidus. And Medial to the posterior limb of the internal capsule, we have the thalamus, and then of course the lateral, the lenticular nucleus is lateral to it. Now I want to point out here that we're, I'm identifying a number of structures which we have not really dealt with functionally, but these structures will become very important as we discuss the various uh, sensory and motor pathways 
and, and uh, motor systems in future slides, slideshows. To study the internal capsule in greater detail, I prepared this special dissection of the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere. And by doing so, I, the, this area of gray matter has been exposed, which is the lenticular nucleus. With the lenticular nucleus in, in view, we cannot see the internal capsule because it lies lateral to the internal capsule and thus is hiding it. But we can see the fiber bundles that are radiating from the internal capsule. These are fibers that are carrying information to the in, uh, cerebral cortex or carrying information from the cortex and descending. These are known as the, this is known as the corona radiata. Continuing with our examination of the lateral dissection of the cerebral hemisphere to, fur to further see the details of the internal capsule. We can see the corona radiata again, but now the lenticular nucleus has been dissected away and we, the area of the internal capsule is now is exposed. And the various subdivisions of it are now visible. Anterior dim, genu, which happens to be online with a, a commissural band that we see here labeled the anterior commissure and the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Many of the fibers of the posterior limb, uh, limb of the internal capsule do travel through or course through the cruis cerebri, which is labeled here. And remember the cruis cerebri, cerebri is part of the midbrain. The coronal series of sections will extend from anterior, from the frontal lobe, to posterior, the occipital lobe. In this section, we can see two spaces. They are the lateral ventricles, right and left, and uh, this would be the anterior horn portion of the lateral ventricle. Between them there, we can see the uh, part of the corpus callosum, and that's the genu region of the corpus callosum, the most anterior part of it. And thirdly, we see two areas of structures cut in cross section. These are the anterior cerebral arteries that are uh, seen cut inferiorly and superiorly as they wrap around the most anterior part of the corpus callosum. In this coronal section, we again see the corpus callosum, but now we're getting into the body of the corpus callosum at this point. And just below the corpus callosum, we see the lateral ventricle and the septum pellucum, which separates the, the two lateral ventricles from each other. Lateral to the lateral ventricle, we can see the caudate nucleus. Now, the caudate nucleus is, if we could see it three-dimensionally, is a also a C-shaped structure. It has an enlarged anterior portion to it, which is called the head of the caudate, and that's what we have here. Then we could see the internal capsule, which is lateral to the caudate nucleus. And then we see another gray matter mass, which is part of the lenticular nucleus. Uh, and here is this, this is just the putamen. Now the putamen is the only thing seen here and we don't see the globus pallidus because the putamen is the larger portion of the lenticular nucleus, it forms its most outer portion and uh, it will be in a coronal section, the first thing that is uh, uh, cut in, the, in that section. In these coronal sections, I have tried to uh, match the preserved uh, specimens with stained coronal sections, and that's what we see here. So you can compare the images we saw in the preserved specimen with those things we see in the stained specimen, such as the corpus callosum, the caudate nucleus, internal capsule, putamen. One other feature we see on here is uh, 
the olfactory tract, which you see in the most inferior part of this specimen, stained specimen. If you look just above that, you can see two sort of elliptical structures. They are across uh, the uh, anterior cerebral arteries that have been um, cut here in this section. Continuing with our posterior tour through the coronal sections of the forebrain, we can see a very, very narrow, thin white band uh, crossing the midline, connecting the two hemispheres. That's the anterior commissure. Now, recalling from a previous section, the anterior commissure marks the proximate site where we see the genu of the internal capsule. And medial to that genu, we see the caudate nucleus, the body portion of it. And laterally, we see the lenticular nucleus, and it's two parts now clearly visible, the butamen laterally and the, the and globus pallidus medially. The corpus callosum, our major commissural band connecting the two hemispheres. This would be the body of the corpus callosum. And below it, we see the, the, the uh, lateral ventricle separated from each, each other by the septum pellucidum. And at this level, or this plane section, we can see at the, on the inferior, inferior edge of the, the specimen in the midline, we see a bundle of white matter, and that's where the two optic nerves meet. And this is called the optic chiasm. Now we can compare our fixed specimen of the uh, coronal section of the brain that we just saw with the stain section. And you can see very nicely uh, the features that we saw in the previous section, the uh, corpus callosum, the lateral ventricle, caudate nucleus, internal capsule, genu region, because there is the anterior commissure in, in view, and um, the two parts of the lenticular nucleus, putamen and globus pallidus, and finally, it inferiorly, the optic chiasm. Now, in this coronal section, we can see a very narrow slit in the midline, which is the third ventricle. And that third ventricle is, is a space within the diencephalon. And in the lateral, the, the, that third ventricle, we have two uh, gray matter masses that are part of the diencephalon, the thalamus and the hypothalamus, which are separated by a, a narrow or little, little depression, I should say, which is the hypothalamic, hypothalamic sulcus indicated by this asterisk. The presence of the third ventricle and the thalamus and hypothalamus note the position of the posterior limb of the internal capsule, which we see here, border medially by the body of the caudate nucleus and laterally by the lenticular nucleus, which is we can see the, clearly see its two parts, the butamen and globus pallidus. Above, we can again see the corpus callosum, clearly in view, the body of it. Lateral ventricle. And inferiorly, or dorsally, we see two white bodies. This is the optic tract that extends posteriorly from where the optic chiasm was viewed. Lateral to that and below the lenticular nuclei structures, we see a gray matter mass, which is in the uh, temporal lobe of the brain, is, is the amygdala. The amygdala is part of the uh, limbic system. Now, make, making a comparison of our, of our preserved specimen uh, structures we saw uh, with the stained specimen, and I think it, you can see quite clearly all those features. The corpus callosum, the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, thalamus, hypothalamus, posterior limb, the internal capsule, putamen and globus pallidus, optic tracts, and the uh, amygdala.
Continuing posteriorly in our tour of these coronal sections, uh, we see that the third ventricle is still an obvious structure and its lateral wall of the prominent uh, gray banner mass is the uh, thalamus of the diencephalon. And the immediately lateral to it, of course, is the posterior limb of the internal capsule. That posterior limb contains uh, uh, axons that communicate or travel through the cerebri of the midbrain that we see labeled as number eight here. Um, two other features that are part of the midbrain are also obvious in this section, and they are the red nucleus and the substantia nigra. The corpus callosum is continuing to be uh, evident in, in this coronal section, as well as the uh, lateral ventricle, which we not only see in, in this, where we've see, been watching it or following it, but also now we can see it down in the temporal lobe. This is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle that is uh, present here in this, uh, in this section. Again, we see it in two places because the C-shaped configuration of the lateral ventricle. Uh, Medial to the posterior limb and internal capsule, we have the caudate nucleus. It's getting smaller here. It's still the body region, but uh, it's smaller. And laterally, we see the two components of the lenticular nucleus, the putamen and the uh, globus pallidus. And also featured here, we can still follow or continue to follow the optic tracks which will ultimately end up in a nucleus of the thalamus. Now comparing our uh, preserved specimen with the stained specimen, we can see that all the, the features very nicely in that stained specimen. Corpus callosum, lateral ventricle, thalamus, third ventricle, caudate nucleus, Butamen and globus pallidus, posterior limb, internal, posterior limb of the internal capsule, uh, cru cerebri, and the substantia nigra and red nucleus. That are, those that latter three things are part of the midbrain. Uh, there's a structure, not the structure label on this uh, stained specimen. It's, it's the subthalamic nucleus. You can see it in the preserved specimen. Uh, uh, I didn't indicate it on the previous slide, but it is visible. And then, and uh, that is a one of the nuclear masses that, uh, along with the substantia nigra and a number of other gray matter masses that are part of the. Uh, components of the motor systems that will be discussed in other slideshows. Now in this coronal section we can see the thalamus is still clearly visible and we see a, a section of through the pines. There is some of the midbrain also visible just above it there but uh, it's not labeled. Um, and we see features that we see have seen in previous sections the corpus callosum lateral ventricle cut in two locations. The larger one is still part of the body and the smaller slit down in the temporal lobe of the brain there is the uh, um, uh, part of the inferior horn. And in the wall of the lateral ventricle we can see the caudate nucleus, a little bit of the body that we can see. Now we're peering posteriorly at, uh, in, in the um, third ventricle and noting where it leads to a small opening that connects with the uh, fourth ventricle. And that is the opening is the opening to the cerebral aqueduct. Bridging over that is a commercial band, the posterior commissure. Now we're going to see two additional uh, nuclei. They are, they are sub components of the thalamus. This is the medial geniculate nucleus. It's, it is part of the um, auditory pathway and the lateral geniculate nucleus, it's part of the visual pathway. One last feature is this uh, uh, scroll-like structure. It's the hippocampus. It's in the wall of that inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. It's, it's a component of the limbic system.
Now looking at our comparison stain slide, we can see some features uh, that we saw in our preserved specimen, the corpus callosum, the lateral, lateral ventricle cut in two locations, and we see the inferior horn portion uh, with the uh, hippocampus in its lateral, in its wall. The uh, third ventricle and the, and the thalamus, and a sub subnucleus of the thalamus is the uh, lateral geniculate nucleus, which is part of the visual pathway. Uh, note here also the uh, posterior limb of the internal capsule is uh, indicated just lateral to the thalamus, and uh, notice how it is continuous with the cerebri portion of the midbrain. Uh, in addition, on the stain specimen, we can see the substantia nigra portion of the midbrain, and as well the red nucleus, which we uh, saw on the uh, rostral portion of the midbrain and other slideshows. Uh, now, the last section of our coronal series, we can see uh, we're peering into the posterior limit of the lateral ventricle, which is the posterior horn. And you can see uh, the continuation of it going into the temporal lobe, and that's the inferior horn. In the midline, just above the midbrain, is, is this pineal body. It's at the posterior part of the diencephalon. And as I said below, we have the midbrain, prawns, and medulla cut in this coronal plane. And finally, the two cerebellar hemispheres we see uh, also in view. And this is simply uh, the index of the uh, slides we saw, the various uh, horizontal and uh, coronal sections.